Oh, sorry. Oh, there we go. Hello, hello. Good evening and welcome. So for this evening, we have plenty of things to do. We're going to be working. Hey there, Eric. Good evening. Good evening. So Good we're evening. going to be working. Hey there, Nady. Uh, on a couple of things. Um, we're going to have to finish the questions section that we were working on last night before we had to abruptly finish the class. We also have um, not the obligation, but I consider um, the responsibility to go ahead and also solve some of the um, exercises that are part of section one, because I remember earlier today, I had to tell you guys to go ahead and finish section one and two. Um, I beforehand wanted to apologize because what we normally do, or I mean, me personally, I go a little bit slow on the topics. I do not follow the same pace as the sections or the requests advance that you guys have to do with the platform. Like normally you will have to go a little bit ahead um, from the topics. What we do is that we then cover and explain most of what is um, part of the topic in the platform as well. But okay, now Another thing is that if you remember, today is the last class of this week. So it is very, very common for me to ask you guys for, uh, or I mean, to ask you this very specific question every Thursday or Friday, whenever we get to the last class of the week. And uh, I think you already know what it is, right, Eric? Or you don't remember? No, I, I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay, you don't Be remember. Be honest with you, I don't remember. Yeah, it's about the plans for the weekend. Whenever we get to um, uh, yeah, yeah to Thursday or yeah. Friday, I go ahead and ask you guys that. Okay, okay, so we have that. And also, well, as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and finish or wrap it up with the questions section. Okay, so first off is the question. Um, so I'm going to be asking you guys uh, for the plans. I'm going to start with Sonia. So Sonia, tell me, do you happen to have any plans for this weekend? What? Uh, me lo repite, por, please. Yeah. Do, do you have any plans for the weekend? Uh, I want to go to church. Okay, cool. So going to church, that is your plan. Very nice. Um, how about Nady? Do you happen to have any plans for this weekend, Nady? Um, my plans uh, for this week are go to to the supermarket. Okay. Only. <laughs> okay, so you're only going to go to the supermarket. That's the only fixed plan for the weekend. Very nice. Thanks for sharing. How about Sandra? Do you have any plans for this weekend? I hope to go to the cinema and I hope to do homework. Okay, so homework. I can only, I can tell that almost all the time you have a lot of homework. So hopefully you can be done with that um, pretty soon and you can get to rest for a bit. Okay, so I mean, it's not like an amazing plan, you know, but still we have to go through it. All right, um, Josue, do you have any plans expecting you this weekend? Uh, I have a plan. Ah, ah, I go to the beach and, and visit with my family. Okay, very good. So you're going to the beach. That's a really good idea. Great. I hope you can relax and, and, and spend some really good time at the beach. Okay, um, Lourdes, do you happen to have any plans for this coming weekend? Okay, I think I think you're still on mute. Ah, uh, hello. There hey there. Hello, hello there. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm going to visit to to my to my aunt. Uh, she she lives in Aguachapan. Oh, cool! So you're going for a road trip to Aguachapan. Very nice. Yes, uh, this is the the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, 
I am going to to visit to my grandmother in law. Okay, so oh, mother in law, no mother in law. Oh, your mother in law. Yes, okay. my mother in law. Very good. Oh, That's very experience. good. All right. Something you can say. I mean, if you're not specifically going only to your mother in law's house, you can say guys, or you can refer to your your um your fiances or your spouses, family as your in-laws. Sí, o sea, sería como una forma general, ¿verdad? De referirnos a ellos. Podemos decir in-laws, como la familia de su esposo, su esposa. Y si, si la de su novio o novia también le quieren llamar así, no hay problema. Pero sería, o sea, también pueden decirlo así, ¿verdad? Your in-laws. Ok, so I hope you have a good time with them. Um, Eric, any special plans for the weekend? Trying to get her back, probably. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, like Friday to Saturday, like Sunday, sorry. Yeah, Friday to Sunday. Mm, tomorrow, maybe I go to the school, the, my nephew's school, because uh, they will celebrate uh, Hawaii, Hawaii, day, Hawaii days, Hawaii mm -hmm. day, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they 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 will dance and 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 the other thing the other things okay. and since Saturday maybe I I will do my homework and, <clears throat> and at night I will to the to the swimming pool. Oh, cool. And on Saturday and Sunday, sorry, I go to visit my my parents in law. Okay, you're in laws. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you are you not you're not playing now? You're not in any tournament? No. Oh, okay. We are we are in vacation. In vacation? When do you start playing again? And the next month. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because I remember last time we were in a class, you were playing like, yeah. you played like five short tournaments in, in during the that uh, time. Yeah, okay, uh, nice. I had three tournaments. Oh, yeah, because I remember you, you're sharing the fact that you won most of the tournaments. Yeah. Quisiera ver los trofeos, yo ver si es cierto que se ganaron esos torneos. No, because <laughs> the trophies, the trophies are in... In the captain, the captain, captain house. Oh, okay, cool. I'm nice. not captain. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Eric. All right, now, um, Catherine, Catherine Gabriela, do you happen to have any plans for this coming weekend? Okay, we're not getting an answer from Catherine. How about Emilia? Do you happen to have any plans for this weekend, Emilia? Hi, good night. Uh, to this weekend on Saturday is my my sister's birthday. So we are going to go to the beach or the forest or to the Pitala. Okay. <laughs> I'm not very clear with the idea, but it's for the birthday. <laughs> but you're doing something and that's what counts. Yes. Okay, very good. Good, good idea. And uh, happy birthday to you, sister. Um, how about Rosa? Do you happen to have any plans for this weekend, Rosa Hernandez? My plans is um, I visit the hospital uh, and um, my baby. Oh, okay. Very nice. Nice idea then. Going to the hospital with your baby. Um, how about Guadalupe? Do you have any plans for the weekend? Yes, I have. I have plans. For example, on Saturday, I have to go to, the, to my job just in the morning. And okay. after that, in the afternoon, I, I will go to the mall with my husband. And I get maybe... Um, meal and many things and on Sunday I will go to the mall with my family because I will enjoy uh, with them when we we have a lunch maybe there okay. maybe in the center uh -huh. just that 
es quincena porque todos andan queriendo gastar ahorita, ya me fijé. Porque ustedes creen que Josué así nomás es que va para la playa. Él va a pagar todo, dicen. <laughs> okay, uh, how about Crisia? Crisia Alvarenga, do you have any plans for the weekend? Um, no, nothing special. Okay. And maybe need to go to the supermarket and I go to pay my debt. <laughs> ¿Ven qué les digo? Es quincena. <laughs> Cayó bien este fin de. Okay, how about Perla? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I go to the um, play football um, on Saturday. Oh, cool. Very good. Yeah. So nice. I hope you have a really good game. And uh, last but not least, we're going to, oh, wait, no, we have Gonzalez, whose name, I don't know what it is, but it's the Gonzalez987 um, at gmail.com. So, Gonzalez, do you have any plans for the weekend? Hi. Hi only there. word, more word, more word, more word. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, so working the whole weekend. And the favorite day restaurant. Oh, okay. It's understandable then. Well, hopefully you can enjoy it. You know, sometimes when we go to work, it's a little bit better. I, I mean, normally I have like three different jobs and I will also go to work on different things on weekends. So, I mean, sometimes it's enjoyable to go to work. So very good. And Maritza, do you have any plans for the weekend, Maritza? Good night. Good night. Um... Uh, the work and cleaning the house and every day um, poco descanso okay just not many uh, time I mean not many hours for resting but still you know that's the life of a superhero um, so we have to work on this for a little bit guys because I mean, I, I am not a bad teacher. I don't like asking you guys to do something and just leave you off on, and alone doing it. Normally I do this. I like to help you on some of the knowledge checks. So with you, I'm going to be working on, on this from uh, 1.8 and 1.11. So we're going to develop these two knowledge checks. In case you had any of these um, answers wrong, you can go ahead and rectify it. And uh, still, you know, it's a little bit of a, um, a support just so you, can, you guys can um, have the, the opinion or the, like the, the, the opportunity to solve um, some of the situations if you haven't to this point. So 1.8, this is one of the knowledge checks related to um, the topic we're going to be working on this evening, actually. So it's also very important for you to pay attention to it. Um, we have the first question here or the first little exercise and it goes as following. Which option is correct? Uh, is a correct way to answer the question. Were you a good student in high school? Were you a good student in high school? We have three options. The options are, yes, I was. Yes, I were. Or no, I were. Um, according to you, um, Crisia, what is the best way to answer this question? Were you a good student in high school? Yes, I was. Yes, I were. Or no, I were. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Very good. So that is a very good option because remember when we're going to be using be or any of the forms of the verb be in the past with a singular pronoun or a singular noun, we're going to be using was. All the, all the time when we have a plural form or a plural uh, noun, we're going to be using this form, which is word. Um, for example, if we have we, it will be then word we were but for i it's always going to be was and no i were it's also incorrect because here we will need also a negation after where in case you would like to use that one because for some people um it is possible to use weren't when you're uh, negating something so we will if it, if it was to work it will have to have the not at least at the end here all right next question is Put these words in the correct order. You born were city in this. 
So which one will be the proper order? You were born in the city, born you were in the city, or were you born in the city? Which is the best option to answer this? Um, we're going to give the opportunity now to, um, let's see, lower this. So which is the best option here, lower this? You were born in the city, born you were in the city, were you born in the city? Remember, this is a question. So what, what is the best option? Um, where you were, where you were in the city? Very good. Where you born in the city? Because if you were Yoda, if you were Yoda from Star Wars, then the best option will be born you were in the city. But that's if you were Yoda. But we are not Yoda. We are regular people, uh, and we are going to be using were you born in the city? Very nice. So third one, form a question to match this answer. My favorite subjects were math and science. Now, what is the best question to get this as an answer? What were your favorite subjects in school? What uh, were you good in math? Why were you good in math and science? Now, Josue, what will be the best option to answer or what will be the best question to get this as an answer? Okay, I'm going to read your lips because you didn't activate the microphone, but I could see that you said, oh, it's okay, it's okay, that you said what were okay. your favorite well, subjects in, in school. Yeah. Excuse me, excuse me. No, it's okay, no problem. All right. Um, so the next one up is um, which is correct? Like which of these three questions is correct? Now, the questions are, how many was Peter born? When was Peter born or where was Peter born? Remember, this is not the where as in the double H question, but this is like where as in the past, as if, if um, the counterpart of a present situation. And uh, the answer is going to be provided by Emilia. So Emilia, which one do you think is correct? How many was Peter born? When was Peter born or where was Peter born? When was Peter born? When was Peter born? Because here we have like the proper structure. And also um, we see that this is the only question that has like the correct way to ask for when something happened or when somebody was born. Because here, how many? Well, it could work, but it will need some extra words. Like for example, how many years ago was Peter born? So that will be an option. How many years ago was Peter born? But how many was Peter born makes no sense. And where was Peter born either? It does not make any sense. Okay, and the next one is, choose the best question to match this response. I was 15 years old. Um, and this is something I might be asking you guys in a bit, some questions like this, if we have time, but I'm not sure just yet. Uh, but the questions are, when were you born or sorry where were you born how old were you in 1999 were you a good student when you were 15 years old so um from nady what would be the best question or the best um yeah the best question to get this as an answer and how old or how old were you in 1999 okay how old were you in 1999 very good. So let's hit them submit and see if we did right. Apparently, yes. So I think we're doing good progress. I think we are very good as students. Very nice. All right. So we have that out of the way. Now we're going to do this one. This is a little bit trickier because it is a topic we haven't really covered just yet. Um, but still, it is also kind of entertaining. And I, I bet you guys have already done this. So the knowledge check doesn't really have any uh, explanation apart from the questions. So the main goal for us here is going to be just answer these questions. So where did Jerry grow up? Um, we have the three options. She grew up in Brighton, England. She grew up in Brighton, Ireland. She grew up in Brighton, England. Eric, what is the best way to answer this question? Uh, she grew up in Brighton, England. 
she grew up in Brighton, England, because in the first one, we have a um, a present, present uh -huh, a present verb. In the second one, we have a past, but with the present structure of third person. And remember that when we use um, verbs in the past, we forget completely about the S at the end for verbs for third persons or for third um, subjects. We are only going to be using the verb in the past tense. Um, so this one is not valid because of this S and because Brighton is not in Ireland. It is actually in England. So very good. Okay, next one is, did Jerry have a hobby? Did Jerry have a hobby? Jerry used to paint and she still paints today. Jerry used to collect stamps. Jerry used to go surfing. So this one is supposed to be taken from the video that you guys have seen previously. Now, what is the proper answer to this, Sandra? Do you remember? Uh, Jerry used to paint and she is still paint today. Okay, Jerry used to paint and she still paints today. The reason why grammatically, grammatically, this is the proper answer is because here we have the um, used to. We are talking about past situations. Therefore, we need to use the verb in the past. But here, the verb is in the present tense. So Jerry used to collect stamps is not valid because it is in the present tense. And Jerry uses to go surfing either because uses, once again, will be used in the third person, but in the present, not in the past. So this one is not valid either. And then next one up. Choose the best response for this question. What game did you used to play when you were a kid? What game did you used to play when you were a kid? Um, the answer here is going to be given by Rosa, Rosa Hernandez. What is the, oh, wait, 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 give me a sec. I'm going to read the options first. I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. Um, I used to play, sorry, I used to play, I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. So what will be the best option to answer this question, Rosa? Um, I used to play basketball and football when I was a kid. Okay, muy bien. Sería, I used to play basketball when I was a kid. El motivo siendo que cuando utilizamos used to, así como suele pasar en el caso de que utilizamos el auxiliar did, este used to ya representa el pasado. Por lo tanto, el verbo principal, no hay, no hay necesidad que este verbo esté en, uh, en pasado también. Así que por eso este no sería, verdad, eh, utilizable, ¿sí? Porque no vamos a poner I used to play, sino que I used to play sería la mejor opción. Y en este otro, I used to play, no porque este está en presente. Entonces tampoco va a funcionar. Muy bien. Number four. Choose the best response to this question. What did you use to collect when you were a kid? The options are, I used to collect comic books when I was a kid. I used to... Um, collect comic books when I was a kid. I used to collect comic books when I was a kid. Taking the uh, previous examples, Josué, what would be the best option to answer this question? Remember the mic? <laughs> excuse me, there you excuse go. Me. It's Sorry. okay, it's okay. Es jueves, ya está tarde. <laughs> Yeah, I used to collect comic books when I was a kid. The reason, once again, is in the used to section. Because here it is in the present tense. We don't need it in present tense. Here it is a double past tense. And we don't use uh, double past tenses uh, when we're talking about used to. Now we have the last one. My last job was easy and relaxing. I... And here we have the three options. Used to, used to, was used to. Work from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
Monday to Friday and had weekends off. Um, so taking your word, um, Nady, what would be the best option to answer or to, to fulfill this blank? Just said to. Used to. Very good. The first used to there. All right. So we once again got a proper score and we have it all ready, all completed. Very good. Gracias, chicos, por la copia. Ahora creo que sí, ya voy a, creo que voy a poder pasar. Así que, ajá, vamos a movernos entonces a la siguiente parte porque eso era Don't todo worry, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much because I was very worried. I, I, I was afraid I was going to fail. All right, so, uh, first off, sure. sí, dígame. I have, I have a question. Okay, tell me. Uh, okay, uh, according to the, to the indication for the, for the exercise in the mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, say that we have the the two section for this week. Yes. Yes. But yes. Yes. I but the lessons are uh, the exercise are more fast than the class. Sí, <laughs> the eso topics. siempre pasa. Es lo que les estaba diciendo al principio de la clase. Que a menos a mí me pasa siempre. Sí, no sé si los demás eh, teachers hagan así. O sea, si van acelerados, pero en mi caso casi siempre voy un poquito más lento de lo de lo que serían los exercises. Porque voy, o sea, tratando de agregar más información y más cosas, pero al final siempre termino a tiempo, ¿ok? Porque sí, el, el caso, pues, si, si no me creen, pregúntenle a Eric, este, que ya hemos estado trabajando en grupos anteriores y siempre terminamos a tiempo, hasta nos sobran, de hecho, eh, secciones, pero... Eh, sí, suele pasar que va más acelerado la situación, ¿verdad? De, de los ejercicios que lo que serían las clases. Eso es normal y por eso es que siempre en la primera clase yo les digo que ustedes no, no, o sea, no se preocupen en absoluto, que pueden trabajar a su ritmo, pueden ir trabajando adelantado. Eso nunca va a ser un problema porque yo sé que o sea, las clases van un poquito más atrás, pero pues siempre considero que son importantes por las explicaciones que pueden haber de cada uno de los, de los, de los puntos, ¿verdad? Que son parte de los temas. Pero sí, ese es un, un detalle que, que quizás no les había mencionado. Pero bueno. No, it's okay. No problem. Yes, okay. Because the mm -hmm. many exercises I I I feel very difficult. Oh, anytime you feel like that, eso sí, siempre que se sienta de esa forma, ahí no hay problema. Usted puede mencionármelo antes de, de iniciar la clase o incluso cuando ya estemos acá y o sea, podemos revisarlo, porque eso no es problema. Cuando haya ejercicios que sean complicados, eh, para eso estamos, o sea, eso es básicamente como el objetivo principal, ¿verdad? El poder apoyarles a ustedes en el desarrollo de los mismos. Entonces, si, si en algún momento pasa eso, que hay algún ejercicio que, que nos cueste mucho, no importa si el ejercicio ya sea de la sección 4 o la sección 5, ustedes déjenme saber y lo vamos a buscar y lo vamos a revisar para poderlo solucionar. Así que eso sí, este, tómenlo en cuenta siempre, por favor. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome. All right, so here we have uh, another short list of verbs. We are going to be um, practicing um, 15 new verbs. This time around, I'm going to do it so we can do it a little bit faster and we don't spend too much time on this. So the verbs we have are very simple. Feel, para sentir. Put, para poner. Sí, bring, que significa traer. Begin, que significa iniciar. Keep, que significa mantener. Hold, que significa sostener. Write, que significa escribir. Stand, que significa ponerse de pie o pararse. O sí, sea, va a hacerle frente incluso. Hear, como la Rosalía me siento ya diciendo eso, tantos significados para uno mismo, pero bueno. Hear, que significa escuchar. Let, que significa permitir. Mean, que significa, pues eso, significar. Um, set, que significa preparar. ¿sí? Uh, meet, que significa conocer o encontrar en algunos casos. Run, que lo vamos a utilizar para correr. Y pay, que es para pagar. El caso de meet es importante, creo, que lo, que lo conozcamos y el cómo lo vamos a utilizar. Porque sí, meet se usa cuando ustedes recién conocen a alguien. Sí, I just met your friend. Acabo de conocer a tu amigo. Pero si ustedes le dicen a alguien que se vean en un lugar, alguien que ustedes ya conocen y le piden que se encuentren, qué sé yo, para tomarse un café, para poder discutir alguna situación, también podemos utilizar el verbo meet. O sea, también le podemos decir, ¿verdad? Hey, can we meet at the cafeteria? Sí, o sea, nos podemos encontrar en la cafetería. Entonces se puede utilizar este verbo meet para ambos, ambas situaciones. Cuando ustedes recién conocen a alguien o también para encontrarse con alguien. 
Muy bien. Next one then. Um, the what past... is significant? Sorry? What is the meaning of set? Set sería preparar. Preparar, ok. Uh -huh. Set. Preparar. Um, por ejemplo, en el caso que ustedes uh, hayan alguna vez visto la palabra setting, ¿sí? setting um, se refiere a las preparaciones. O sea, setting en el caso de las, de las películas o um, obras de teatro, ese tipo de, de contexto. Diferente en el teléfono. Si tenemos settings en el teléfono, ahí se va a referir a configuraciones. Um, será, o sea, un, un, un tema aparte, pero el setting en una, en un, um, ¿cómo se llama? En un, en español se me olvidó porque siempre lo digo en inglés, pero bueno, en, en, en el teatro o en las películas, sí, um, siempre se va a entender, ¿verdad? Como las preparaciones, como todo lo que ya se, el escenario, sí, que ya se tiene listo para poder desarrollar esta, esta obra o la película. Entonces, eh, por eso set se va a entender como preparados. Por ejemplo, si en, um, si en, las, en, las, en, las, en las carreras ustedes escuchan ready, set, go, o sea, sería también verdad casi que lo mismo. Listos, preparados, vayan. Sí, o sea, es como al revés porque debería ser primero set, ready, go. O sea, preparados, listos, vayan, pero pues eh, ya se acostumbró, ¿verdad? Que sea ready, set, go. Pero el set es para referirse a eso, ¿verdad? A preparados. Ok, so, um, the, the past tense, which is the one that we came here for, the one that we care about most, uh, will be for feel, it's felt, for put, it is put, for bring, it is brought, for begin, it is begun, for kept, for keep, sorry, it is kept, for hold, it is held, for write, it is wrote, for stand, it is stood, for here, it is Heard. Aquí se hay un cambio, ¿verdad? Hear, a heard. For let, to let. For meaning, or, sorry, for mean, to meant. For set is once again set. For meet, it is met. For run, it is run. For pay, it is paid. Uh, and then the past participle, it's just a couple changes in the, in the pronunciation. Of course, this is not like the most important thing for us but the pronunciations should be as following. Felt, put, brought, begun, kept, held, written, stood, heard, let, meant, set, met, run, and paid. Ahora, hay una cosa importante que no sé si ustedes se han fijado en esto. Siempre que existen verbos que son en, forma de, en formato de CBC, o sea que eso significa consonant, vowel, consonant, o sea consonante, vocal y consonante, Um, en inglés son muy comunes, ¿verdad? Ese tipo de verbos así cortitos. Siempre que tenemos este tipo de verbos que terminan en una letra T, ¿sí? Esos verbos van a tener la misma forma en, las tres, en los tres tiempos. En su forma base, en su forma del pasado y en el participio. O sea, esa es básicamente como una regla no tan famosa, no tan conocida, pero que es algo que sucede. Habrá excepciones, pero por lo general es de esta forma. O sea, ustedes ven aquí put, 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 let, 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 set, set, set. Pero eso sucede cuando es una T. Diferente en el caso, por ejemplo, de este, que es otro que es un CBC, o sea, que es consonant, vowel, consonant, pero aquí tenemos una N al final. Entonces sí sufre un cambio, ¿sí? Run, run, y al final también vuelve a ser run, ¿verdad? Pero run, run, run. Eh, en el caso de pay es otro que es CBC, pero como es una Y, pues también cambia para, el, para su forma del pasado. It's like pay. C, right? ¿Mm? C, uh, C. Uh -huh. So, sin. Uh -huh. Sí, o sea, ese también es uno que, que, que cambia bastante porque pues lo mismo, o sea, no tiene una T al final, pero los que tienen esa T al final, por lo general se van a quedar tal y como están en las tres formas. O sea, si, si se fijan aquí, put, 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 o sea, va a verdad igualito en las tres. Y la pronunciación igual, es la misma en las tres. Ok, entonces estos son los verbos. Ahora vamos a lo que venimos y es la formación de um, preguntas interrogativas, perdón, de, de oraciones interrogativas o interrogative statements. Aquí vamos a estar formando preguntas. Las estructuras que vamos a, a necesitar para estas preguntas. Bueno, tenemos primero el auxiliary que vamos a clarificar de una vez. Auxiliary is did. Sí, aquí es específicamente did porque todo esto es acerca del pasado. So, did. 
then we need a subject. The subject can be anything. Remember, when you use a subject, you can use a pronoun or you can use a straight up the name of the person or the noun that you're referring to. It is not necessary that all the time you have to say you or you have to say I. Sometimes you can also use the names of the people that you're referring to. Then you have the verb and uh, for last, the complement. Now, important to remember, almost in all questions, um, in the past, you're not going to have to use the verb in the past tense. Para la mayoría de las preguntas en el pasado, el verbo principal de la oración no deberá estar en su forma del pasado. Puede estar fácilmente en su forma base porque este did al principio es el que va a tomar verdad la carga de ese, esa estructura del pasado. Pero bueno, vamos a empezar con los ejemplos. Vamos a obtener el primero de parte de Sandra. I don't know if you have any example, Sandra, for a interrogative statement in the past using did in the beginning. Recordemos que estas, estas son de las que se contestan con sí o no. Así que esa es una cosa que te, debemos tener en mente, ¿verdad? Uh, did you take English classes in Argentina? Ok, did you take English classes in Argentina? Estamos copiando. <laughs> English classes in Argentina. Did you take English classes in Argentina? That is a very good example. Did you take English classes in Argentina? Here we have all that we need. Did in the beginning, the subject, then we have the verb, and then the complement, which in this case will be English classes in Argentina. All right. Um, now, from Gonzalez. So do we have an example from you, please, Gonzalez? Eso durmió entonces. Vamos a ver, Emilia, can we please get an example from you? Hello, Emilia Serna. Oh, there we go. Teacher. Hello. Hey there. Uh -huh. Can we please get an example from you? Me teacher, okay, the, okay. Mm -hmm. the speaking the English. Okay, did you speak English? Sorry, did you speak English? Very good. So this one is a um, very simple question. Now, of course, sometimes we will need to add more information. Si es una pregunta bastante fácil esta, did you speak English? O sea, hablabas inglés. Pero también, o sea, podemos agregar más información, ¿verdad? Podemos decir, por ejemplo, did you speak English um, in Guatemala? Vamos a ponerle que es un lugar cercano, ¿verdad? Did you speak English in Guatemala? Now, of course, it is not necessary, like you're not going to be needing English in Guatemala, but still, you may in some occasions. But did you speak English? Again, it can work. O sea, funciona como una pregunta, pero podría ser una pregunta un poco más extensa, más explicada, ¿verdad? Pero está bien. Okay, so um, we didn't get an answer, uh, a question from... Okay, Emilia, can we get one from you now? Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. Did you eat breakfast yesterday? All right. Did you eat breakfast? Breakfast yesterday. Did you eat breakfast yesterday? Oh, here I am missing. What am I missing here? Oh, there are breakfast yesterday. Did you eat breakfast yesterday? Very simple, very straightforward. And it is once again, a just no question. So no brainer, no, it's not gonna be hard at all to answer um, this kind of question. In the case of uh, Rosa, Rosa Esmeralda, can we please get an, a, a, an example from you? Hello, Rosa Esmeralda. Por eso es que no encienden la cámara, ¿verdad? Porque se duermen. Okay, um, Sonia, can we please get an example from you? Ah, 
uh, did you have class uh, today? Did you have a class today? Okay, very simple, very straightforward once again. Um, did you have a class today? So you can answer, yes, I did, no, I didn't. And that's also as simple as it gets. Um, from Ricardo, Ricardo Martinez, can we please get an example from you? Um, did Rosa say an example in today's class? <laughs> okay. Did Rosa say an example in today's class? In today's class. And here we are going to add the apostrophe. There we go. Did Rosa say an example in today's class? Did she? I don't remember. But yeah, did Rosa say an example in today's class? Yes, she did. No, she didn't. Very simple to answer that as well. Uh, and now from Guadalupe, can we please get one example of a um, interrogative statement? A simple interrogative statement. Did you take your dog to the Chiba pet? Okay, did you take your dog? Did you take your dog to, sorry, what was the last section? To the Chivo pet. Oh. <laughs> 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 did you take it? Come on. <laughs> okay, so did you take your dog to the Chivo pet? I don't have a pet, uh, a pet neither a dog. And I live in San Miguel, so I'm pretty far from all the Chivo pets. So I, I haven't, and I'm not sure if I would, but okay, very good example. Thank you very much, Guadalupe. Um, now, one example from you, Josue, please. It's another mic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. Sí, así como ella, ella también se olvida de Eric, no te preocupes. Did, did you play soccer? Okay, did you play soccer? Did you play soccer with with your teammate last Saturday? Okay, with your teammates last Saturday. That was a long, a long question. So very good. Did you play soccer with your teammates last Saturday? Muy bien. Y puede ser, o sea, que no haya jugado con los teammates, sino que fue a jugar verdad en el papi fútbol con alguien más. Entonces, traidor. So did you play soccer with your teammates last Saturday? Good. Very good example. And the last one from these is going to come from, um, 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 let me see. I think I have gotten most of you guys, but still we have more questions to come. Uh, Crisia. Did you pay? Did you pay the debts? Okay. Did you pay your debts? Your debts. Yeah, debts. Did you pay your debts? There you go. Pagaste sus deudas. Eso suena como el inicio de un informercial. Yeah. Did you pay your debts? Y ahí empiezan ya a hacerle la oferta ¿verdad? con esta forma de pago. Okay. So very simple. All of these questions have a very easy way to answer to them. Like, for example, this one, you can simply go as, yes, I did. Yeah, remember, this is just as, as simple as it gets. Yes, I did. Or you can answer to this one, no, I didn't. But of course, I will always advise you guys to add some extra information. For example, here, did you eat breakfast yesterday? I can say, yes, I did. I had a sandwich. I had a sandwich. So there. Yes, I did. I had a sandwich. How about the answer for no? No, I didn't. I was in a rush. I was in a rush. Si, estaba apurado. No, I didn't. I was um, in a rush. I was in a rush. Estaba apresurado. Entonces, por eso no logré desayunar. Así que para esas, o sea, para todas ustedes pueden contestar como solamente sí o no, pero es aconsejable, ¿verdad? Que tratemos de incluir un comentario extra para que la pregunta, o sea, al final, pues no suene tan fría, tan así como que solamente estoy contestando por compromiso, sino que porque también, ¿verdad? Quiero continuar con la conversación. 
Bueno, siguiente. En este caso vamos a hacer unas que son un poquito más enredadas. Oh, sorry, Emilia. Sorry, uh, can you repeat the, the definition of rush? Rush es como cuando estamos apresurados. Sí, rush. Rush también se utiliza para referirse a... Cuando, ustedes han escuchado a veces que hablan acerca de las fiebres, ¿verdad? Por algo. No necesariamente es cosa como que una fiebre literal de una, de una eh, enfermedad, sino como cuando algo tiene como mucha fama. Sí. Um, hablamos, por ejemplo, del gold rush, que sería como la fiebre del oro, el tiempo en el cual todas las personas se interesan, ¿verdad? Por ese tema. Eh, podríamos hablar acerca del TikTok rush, que sucedió quizás al inicio, ¿verdad? De la situación de hace un par de años. Entonces, um, rush se referiría también a eso. Puede ser utilizado para hablar acerca de estar apresurado o también para hablar acerca de cosas que de la nada se hacen como muy virales o muy famosas. Pero claramente, rush requiere de algún tipo de movimiento. No es como que algo así como ahora, ¿verdad? Que decimos una cosa viral, sino que en sí es como que alguien tiene, ¿verdad? Que realizar alguna acción. Por ejemplo, um, un ejemplo que tal vez no a todos les agrade, el Daddy Yankee Rush que hubo hace dos días. O sea, que toda la gente estaba por ahí que quería comprar los boletos y todo. Entonces, eso también es otro de los, um, de los usos que puede tener la palabra Rush. Ok. Um, también, o sea, si ustedes quieren decirle a alguien que, um, que tenga cuidado, que no se apure, que no eh, se ajolote, podríamos decir, le pueden decir, don't rush, ¿sí? Take it easy, don't rush. O sea, no, como no, no, te, no te sobresaltes, no te apures demasiado en lo que tengas que hacer. Pero bueno, lo que les iba a decir acá, estas es una, son unas de las preguntas que quizás llegan a ser complejas porque no todos los verbos se van a poder utilizar con las preguntas de sí o no, con be, sí, o sea, porque aquí estamos hablando obviamente en el pasado, va, sería con was o con were, sí, pero no todos los verbos se van a poder a acoplar al uso de estas, eh, de estas oraciones, eh, casi siempre en el proceso nos vamos dando cuenta de cuáles son, porque tampoco es que sea como que por regla, sino que a veces ustedes sienten que no funciona del todo bien. O sea, dan cuenta que no funciona del todo bien el verbo, ¿verdad? Para hablar acerca, o sea, de, de preguntas que sean en pasado simple. Esos verbos, o sea, todos los verbos se podrían utilizar, sí, pero quizás con un tiempo distinto, como con un pasado continuo. Ahí, o sea, sería mucho más fácil inclu incluir la mayoría de los verbos. Pero para un pasado simple, algunos van a ser un poquito más complicados. Pero vaya, vamos a poner un ejemplo. Um, por, podría ser was the boss um, late today was the boss late today sí estaba vino tarde el bus eso sería un ejemplo was the boss late today y o sea la respuesta verdad puede ser bastante sencilla yes it was no it wasn't así que um, un ejemplo que venga de parte de Eric have you thought of what, an example for this Cardoza, you still there? I think you take it easy. Don't rush. Don't rush. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, don't rush it. No, um, I don't know. Oh, come on, Mary Jane. Um, uh, Was the was the teacher angry today? Okay, wait. Okay, I'm I'm just trying to. Ya voy, ya voy, ya voy. So, estoy tratando de mandarles un ejemplo de otra cosa que se puede decir a la hora de um, referirnos a lo mismo como el don't rush. Pero este, a ver, este obviamente es una frase de inglés un poco quebrado. No es una frase tan um, como tan 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 formal, sí. Y se puede utilizar con hombres. Eh, lo que pasa es que, o sea, si, si van a utilizarla con hombres, será con hombres con quienes ustedes tengan confianza. Eh, se, se pronuncia don sweat says, ¿sí? Don sweat says. Y a lo que se refiere es, o sea, que no te preocupes tanto. Es casi que lo mismo que el don rush, ¿verdad? Don sweat says. ¿Pueden sustituir el says por un bro al final? Claro que sí, don sweat bro. 
pero pierde un poquito su sentido, porque como suena bien, es deci diciendo la don't sweat it, ¿sí? y es casi como, o sea, el, el lo de eso, ¿verdad? No te preocupes, ¿sí? O sea, como tómalo con calma, don't sweat it, ¿sí? Lo que pasa es que me estaba, se me había olvidado cómo se escribía sweat, y por eso me tardé. Pero bueno, era entonces, was the teacher angry? Today. Ajá, uh -huh. was the teacher angry? Ahí va otro detalle también que les decía el otro día, was the teacher angry? No es necesario siempre colocar un complemento. Podemos solo decirlo así. O sea, una, una referencia al tiempo, pues. No es siempre necesario que en las preguntas, de, solo porque son en pasado, eh, tengan una referencia al tiempo. Yo solo puedo preguntar así, ¿verdad? What's the teacher angry? Porque, por ejemplo, si ustedes, imagínense, um, si apenas este compañero, ¿verdad? Viene eh, de una reunión con el profe, o sea, tenían, por ejemplo, que verse con el profe por una situación que tenían que resolver y así. Entonces, y ustedes quieren preguntarle, o sea, que si estaba enojado el maestro, no le van a decir, was the teacher angry today, sino que le van a decir, was the teacher angry, así que por eso también quiero que nos quede, ¿verdad? Ahí la idea de que no siempre es necesario agregar una referencia al tiempo, sino que a veces solo con la muy pregunta está bien, o sea, ustedes pueden preguntar, was the bus late, si sí, estaba, digo, vino tarde el bus, o sea, y eso está Perfecto, no es necesario, ¿verdad? Agregar este today, que de hecho este yo lo puse ahí, así que lo voy a quitar también. Ok, what's the bus late? Um, aquí, por ejemplo, o sea, otro, otro complemento, en caso de que ustedes quieran agregarlo y no necesariamente eh, tenga que ver con tiempo, podría ser, what's the bus late to school? ¿Sí? ¿Iba tarde el bus a la escuela? Was the teacher angry during the meeting? Durante la reunión. Entonces, hay otros complementos que se pueden usar. No todos tienen que ser siempre referidos al tiempo. No solo porque es una oración en pasado, se va a tener que utilizar, ¿verdad? Un complemento que tenga referencia directamente al pasado. Eso sucede, sí, pero cuando hacemos referencia al futuro, cuando hablamos acerca del presente continuo al futuro, ahí sí siempre se recomienda, ¿verdad? Que esté la referencia al futuro. Pero bueno, vamos a ver otro ejemplo. Este lo vamos a tomar de parte de... Um, let me see, we need Perla. An example using yeah. be at the beginning. Um, was, uh, um, was the um, was the uh, brother uh, what the, what the uh, brother um, uh, take take a bath? Hmm. Was the brother Vamos a ponerlo así. A ver. Vamos a ponerlo así. De esta forma. Was, y aquí lo vamos a reemplazar en lugar de the por your. Sí. Okay. Was your brother in the same bus? Ok. Was your brother in the same bus? ¿Estaba tu hermano en el mismo bus? Sí. Porque como les decía, vaya, ahí was the brother. Esa parte de the brother podría ser compleja. Siempre vamos a necesitar quizás hacer referencia a otra cosa, ¿verdad? Decirle your o my brother. Um, pero lo del take sí puede funcionar. Podemos colocar, por ejemplo, taking. Pero eso ya no sería en pasado simple, sino que sería en pasado participio. ¿Por qué? Es porque, o sea, en ese momento esa persona estaba siendo parte de la acción. O sea, no es algo que se hizo ya y se terminó, sino que o sea, es probable que todavía, ¿verdad? Esta persona esté esperando el bus. O sea, o esté en el mismo bus. Entonces, pero aquí, was your brother in the same bus? Sería una, una opción perfecta para poder preguntar, ¿verdad? Si el hermano estaba en el mismo bus. Yes. Ok. Thank you very much. Uh, one more example. This one we're going to take it from Lourdes. Uh, the example where um, where you go, where where you be a good student. Okay, vamos a quedarnos solamente con esto. Were you a good student? Sí. Were you a good student? Eras un buen estudiante. Were you a good student? No necesitaríamos necesariamente el be. Porque ese sería, o sea, ya está más o menos siendo utilizado acá, uh, ¿verdad? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, were you a good student? ¿Eras un buen estudiante? Y ahí ya está la respuesta. O sea, podemos poner, por ejemplo, Yes, I was. I aced all my tests. 
Sí, o sea, es como que pues sí va el mejor de la clase. I aced all my tests. O no, I wasn't. I was always late. I was always late. No es necesariamente que un mal estudiante sea aquel que llega tarde, pero pues puede tener alguna referencia, ¿verdad? Yes, I was. I aced all my tests. Or no, I wasn't. I was always late. Entonces, estos podrían ser, estos podrían ser algunos ejemplos, ¿verdad? De los que podemos utilizar. Como les digo, no son las preguntas más comunes del mundo. Estas son algunas complicadas de hacer. Asimismo, también para poder encontrar la estructura correcta. Estas de acá sí son un poquito más sencillas y estas son las double H um, questions. Esas serían las que tienen que ver con dónde, cómo, ¿verdad? Y si recuerdan, um, por ejemplo, podemos preguntar con ambos. Puede ser tanto con la forma del be, o sea, con was o where, o con did. Son muchísimo más comunes las preguntas de double H que vengan con did que las que vienen con be, pero ambas pueden ser utilizadas. Ahora, vamos a escuchar un ejemplo de estas de parte de Neri, can we please think of a, of a question uh, including the, uh, I mean, all these elements? O si gustan, puedo colocar un ejemplo, um, sí. Who was um, Who was, oh no. Aquí sería mejor así. Who did Danny take to the airport. Sí. Who did Danny take to the airport? ¿A quién llevó Danny al aeropuerto? Who did Danny take to the airport? Sí. Who did Danny take to the airport? Si queremos otra, por ejemplo. Um, what did Rosa have for lunch? ¿Qué almorzó Rosa? Lunch. There we go. So, what did Rosa have for lunch? Ahora sí. Um, oh, se me fue. ¿Qué se hizo? Aquí está, Nady. Okay, Nady. Can we please get an example now that we have other examples? And um, um, when did you go to the movies? Very good. When did you go to the mall or the movies? Yes. Okay, go to the movies. When did you go to the movies? Very nice. When did you go to the movies? Ahora. Recordarles también, ¿verdad? Siempre que tenemos las double H questions, vamos a tener que, o sea, contestar de una forma un poquito más compleja. No van a ser respuestas de sí o de no, sino que, por ejemplo, en el caso de who did Danny take to the airport? Bueno, yo voy a contestar a quién fue que Danny llevó um, a, a, al aeropuerto. Puedo decir, he was taking his aunt. Sí, estaba llevando a su tía. So he was taking his aunt. Um, en la otra, what did Rosa have for lunch? Aquí puedo ponerle, she ate some pizza. So she ate some pizza. When did you go to the movies? Aquí puedo colocarle, por ejemplo, um, I went um, to see... ¿Qué le ponemos? ¿Cuál película les gusta ahorita? I went to see Sonic last weekend. Jurassic. Ah, la, mi hermana quería ir hoy, pero no teníamos tiempo. <laughs> Jurassic, yeah, yeah, Jurassic World last weekend. Bueno, eso no sería last weekend, ¿verdad? Sino que sería ya hoy temprano, pero bueno. Pero sí, qué sad. Llorando. Ok, um, vamos a ver un ejemplo más y nos vamos. Eh, ese ejemplo lo vamos a sacar de parte de... A José se lo vamos a pedir. The microphone. Ok, José. La responsabilidad. Where, where did you go? In, uh... The weekend. Okay, where did you go during the weekend? So, where did you go during the weekend? Muy bien. Y aquí podemos ponerle, por ejemplo, I went to visit my best friend in Qatar. 
All right. Justo a eso voy ahorita a llamarle a mi mejor amiga que está trabajando allá. Así que, very good. So, I went to visit my best friend in Qatar. Um, so, those will be double age statements or double age interrogative statements. Esos son un poquito más sencillos. La única que cambia o lo que se hace un poquito más complejo, ¿verdad? Como les decía, es la respuesta. Porque tenemos que aplicar más conocimiento o información que no necesariamente es tan sencilla como solo decir sí o no. Pero bueno. Thank you guys very much for your time. Thank you for your attention and the participation in the lessons. Um, we are going to be back on Monday, okay? Tomorrow is off, so you can go ahead and rest tomorrow night. And I will be seeing you guys on Monday. So thank you. Have a really good weekend and have an amazing night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.